We have a question from Mark Ernie. Dave, you should do one about upgrades <clears throat> on a bike. When investing money on a street bike, what upgrades are worth buying first? Good question, actually, and there's some really simple answers to that. If you're buying a street bike, we're not going to talk about track work or race work at all here. Simply a street bike. So the first thing that's critical, and I think these come in even tiers in what you should do first, and let's consider this being done on a budget. First thing you should look at is ergonomics. Brake lever is adjustable. If not, maybe look at replacing the brake lever so that with your hand reach, you can reach the lever quite easily. A lot of us have smaller hands rather than bigger. So with adjustability in a brake lever, you can reach the brake lever quickly and easily. You also need to adjust the lever for angle so that you don't have to pull your wrist back to lift your fingers up and then over to the brake lever itself. So that's the first thing I'd look at. The second thing I'd look at is the same actually with a clutch lever. Is your hand comfortable? Can it reach the lever? If not, go ahead and get that replaced with something that is adjustable. Those are pretty cheap and straightforward investments. Um, and obviously brakes and clutch we use all the time. So ergonomically, you have to be comfortable there. You have to be able to reach the levers quickly and simply without too much of an awkward action. And that, of course, is a big safety concern as well. The same is true to a lesser extent of the gear position and also of the rear brake. So can those be adjusted to put your feet in the right spot? Now, obviously, depending on your inseam, you may have to get rear sets because your leg is too short, you can't quite get your feet in the position you're looking for, and similarly, you cannot get your knee in the tank in the correct position as well. We have done several shows on ergonomics all through on the Throttles YouTube channel, and you'll find a bunch of them there on, on the Throttles website as well. So the bottom line there is if you've bought a bike that doesn't quite fit you right, then go after the ergonomics right away because if you're not comfortable you're pretty much going to sell that bike fairly quickly and there is also the safety factor involved there suspension would be next on the list in getting the bike set to your weight if it's again just a street bike is it close is there a compromise you can make with the suspension adjustments that you have. If you don't have adjustments, how bad is it? Is it too soft, too stiff? Should you change the springs only just to get the bike in the ballpark? If you have to change the springs, do you need to change things like fork oil? If it's a cartridge fork or a dampen rod fork, do you need different oil to make the front end respond better? So there's a couple options there. For some people that spend a lot of time on the bike, a double bubble windshield actually does have a lot of benefit in improved airflow, more rider comfort from less buffeting. So those do actually have a place in terms of looking at the way in which the bike rides, where do you sit, can a double bubble windshield actually give you a lot of comfort. And so that might be a worthwhile investment too. Then lastly, when investing in a street bike, a lot of people ask me about brake lines on my teaching bike, which is a 2009 R1. I still have the standard lines and I run that at a pretty quick pace and I don't have any problems with brake fade. So I wouldn't look at brake lines. I wouldn't look at chain and sprockets because I don't think that's worthwhile money if it's just your average street bike. And then there's additional things to look at such as a slip on exhaust, different brake pads, all of those I think um, if you have the if you have the money to do that, sure, go ahead. You'll get in some horsepower from say a Leo Vinci slip on, which will smooth out the way the bike works. Different brake pads will give you different levels of bite, although again even on the track I use stock brake pads on my R1. So on a budget, there's just a few things that you can look at. Levers, rear sets, windshield, suspension. That will keep things very, very affordable. 
um, in regards to making the bike right. Now obviously with a motorcycle we want to personalize it shall we say and make it our own with all kinds of different stuff. Well once you've got through that short list of things by all means go out and personalize your motorcycle with different hard anodized parts, different carbon fiber pieces and other things. But in in relation to the question, I think there's a real good short list there where you can get the most bang for your buck in terms of investment from your bike. If you have any other questions, please send them to me at Dave Moss Tuning at Facebook or alternatively leave them here at Catalyst Reaction SBW on YouTube. Thanks a lot.